We're always accused of um, of talking the economy into recession and things like that, which I always, I always deny that, you know. And and, um, and um, I think people, uh, the, the, the kind of feedback I get from people, um, sometimes people will say, um, you know, if, if you get a, a mailbag or an email bag, which is, uh, you know, half the people saying you're too optimistic, half the people saying you're much too gloomy, then you think you've got it roughly right. But uh, but a lot of people who email me say they welcome the fact that it's a balanced view. You know, it's not it's not overexcitable. It's not just writing something for the sake of creating a uh, you know a short term effect and so on. And I think that's the most you can do. I mean, I think you have to be. You have to be realistic. You have to say when things, you know, when there are reasons to be, uh, you know, more optimistic than some of the headlines you've read. But you know, we shouldn't pretend that things are are all perfect. You know, so so I think people appreciate, you know, balance and realism actually more than they appreciate um, either, you know, people being, you know, unrealistic cheerleaders or relentlessly gloomy. You know, so so I would expect. Uh, you know, if I wrote that um, uh, either that we, you know, we were going to, you know, in two years' time we're going to we're going to have forgotten all about this budget deficit and uh, and uh, everything would be perfect. I think people would, I would rightly expect a critical mail back. But I would also rightly expect, you know, a critical mail back if I wrote that we were in for two lost decades. You know, because there's no basis for that. It's written for effect. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I hope I'm not criticising anybody who's written that this morning. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, and you know, it's just impossible to say. You know, so you know, so it, it's it, there's no there's no point in in overlaying the gloom either. I think. I mean, it's uh, you know, to some extent, I suppose those things are written in an attempt uh, to try and influence policymakers to do something different. But as I say, I, th I think you know, I think policymakers are quite constrained at the moment. So it, it, in the end, it is just. I think written to make people feel more depressed than they probably were anyway. So, so I try not to do that, uh, but I think there is a role. Yeah, I think there's a role. Well, thank you very much, David. As a hardwired optimist, I'm not depressed. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what I uh, particularly liked about your presentation was the long view that you gave, you know, comparing this episode with pre previous recessions and, and common lessons that we might take from them. And the psychological overshoot is something to be aware of and be aware of, I think. Um, but I thought that was a tremendous presentation that covered a huge amount, and I feel a lot more informed now than I did an hour ago. So thank you very much on behalf of all of us. Thank you. Thank you.